Hallelujah. You may be seated. Um, I was a little remiss in um, uh, welcoming any first-time visitors. Do we have any first-time visitors? Brother, you've been here before, right? One time? Well, welcome back. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Are you all ready? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Reverend Angel. We're looking forward to you tonight. Hallelujah. It's been a long time. How about you guys give a clap offering for the Lord and the ministry gift of Angel Morano. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Bless you. Oh, my goodness. What a time in the spirit, huh? Woo! I say cray cray. It's a little bit of cray cray going on. Woo! One scripture that comes to mind is um, though the fig tree fails to blossom and there's no fruit on the vine, yet will I praise him. Yet will I praise him. Mm -hmm. You know, this morning the Lord was showing me, and he wanted me to share it uh, tonight before I share it on uh, the gift of tongues. <clears throat> he gave me the picture of an oyster, and um, he showed me that <clears throat> the irritation and the friction of the coarse sand in that dark shell creates that pearl. And the Lord showed me that lots of times in those dark places when we're irritated and frustrated and there's things that are causing friction on us spiritually, um, that's when he says, I will work a work in your day that if it was to be revealed, it'll seem like a dream. Like God is still doing a work. I am all the while at work within you, both to will and to do of your good, of his good pleasure. And even though we may not feel like it and all hell is breaking loose around us and despair is knocking on the door. Um, he, you have to remember like that coarse sand in that dark shell, the friction and the irritation of that sand is causing a pearl to come forth. So believe that uh, something is coming out of what you're going through. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, if I was to tell you right now what was happening in my life, uh, you'd be up here laying hands on me, you know. <laughs> and, um, but you know what? We cannot be moved by what we see, what we think, what we feel, what we hear. Um, God is bringing us into a deeper realm of dying to self, a deeper realm of surrender, a deeper realm of um, not being moved by what we see. We walk by faith and not by sight. And uh, it's a higher demand on our spirit man to be disciplined and to stay stalwart and to stay strong. And now we have to really build ourselves up in this hour or forget it. You're just going to be lost by the wayside. You know, even like the times of relying on the flesh and relying on people and expecting people to be there for you and to pray for you, even all that's being taken away. I mean, praise God if they're praying for you, yeah. But um, our dependency on that, God's even taken that away from us. And he's causing us to stand strong in him and only him. So it's an interesting time. I've been even talking to some ministers that are friends of mine. They're in full-time ministry that travels the world. <laughs> and um, it's interesting uh, some of the things that they're going through, one in particular, if I said their name, you would know them. And we talked on the phone, and that's not to boast. We talked on the phone last week for a long time, and, and she began to tell me um, things that she's going through. And um, I was actually blessed, not by the warfare she's going through, but to hear that, um, wow, even someone that powerful and that renowned is totally, totally getting, almost getting discouraged, okay, 
almost getting discouraged. And she explained to me the warfare, the particular warfare she was going through. And um, I have to say I was encouraged, actually. Not by her warfare. Of course, I had compassion and I prayed. But um, that we are not alone. That the best of the best, the strongest of the strongest, uh, is being attacked. And um, we have to stay close to him. We have to stay in that intimate place in the spirit. Um, I'm sharing on the gift of tongues tonight, and I realize that more and more that the gift of tongues is a weapon of warfare. It really is. I'm not talking about our everyday tongues is also a gift of a, a um, weapon of warfare. But the gift of tongues um, is coupled together with tongues and interpretation. I mean, the gift of tongues is coupled together with the interpretation of tongues, the gift of interpretation, okay, so, which is equal to prophecy. And so that is a weapon when the Holy Spirit moves on you to pray in the Spirit, and then he gives you the interpretation. That is a weapon of warfare because then the spirit of wisdom and revelation is revealed and starts flowing forth through those gifts, you know. So they're vital and they're key to warfare, but I believe that um, the church really needs to uh, hear more about these kind of teachings so that we'll flow in them more, you know, because faith does come by hearing. But if we don't hear, um, I remember years ago when I was first saved, I was already flowing in discernment. But as I started hearing more about it, it was I was starting to get honed in that gift. And uh, the more I wanted to learn about it, the more I wanted to flow in it. Uh, then I started pursuing uh, teachings um, on that topic. And uh, I started flowing in it more keener more precise, more accurately, you know. So whatever you lose your hunger uh, of, you'll, you'll finally start lifting, you know. You have to keep desire and hunger uh, coupled together in order to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about the gift of tongues. <clears throat> uh, the Lord showed me that um, uh, he wants to overwhelm us and overflow us with his gifts, you can flow them every day. You don't have to be in church to flow in them. Hopefully, you're flowing them in your daily life. Okay, amen? amen. And um, he wants to lavish us. He's, God is very uh, generous, and he's not stingy uh, when he wants to use us. But unfortunately, uh, we short-circuit him when it comes to being used. And... Um, God doesn't want the church just to have mere knowledge of his gifts, uh, knowledge alone, but he also wants us to have um, the experience and the manifestations of the gifts in our lives, in our daily walk, even in, this, in the public setting in a church. Because his intent was for all of us to flow in the manifestations of all the gifts. So that we, so we need to train and give ourselves over to the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit every single day. Um, some have said, and I've heard people say this, well, I don't think that um, I can flow in any of the gifts of the Spirit. I don't know if I can. I don't know if God wants me to. And, and those are lies of the devil. You know, and because you have not at this point in your life consistently or at all, doesn't mean that God doesn't want to use you. You know, it doesn't mean that he can't and he will not use you. So 1 Corinthians 12, 7, to put that lie to an end that, you know, uh, I don't think I can be using the gifts, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, but the manifestations of the Spirit of God are given to every man. So the manifestations of the Spirit is given to everybody. But we need to tap into them, desire them, covet them, learn about them, and then yield to them. But first, in order to flow in any of the gifts of the Spirit, you must have a foundation or a launching pad um, concerning the gifts. What helps is to learn about them, how to operate them, how to flow in them, then get around teachings like tonight's teaching, because that will activate them in you. Just don't take it, you know, well, you know, we're going to hear about the gift of tongues tonight. Um, just don't sit there to hear and be educated about the gift of tongues. Of course, you're going to be educated, but... Um, allow it to activate in you that gift, you know. Um, that's why he wants us to come under teaching. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so allow it to uh, activate your spirit, man, 
in that realm. Okay. Um, okay. Understand that the gift of tongues is not the same as our heavenly language. Okay? When we speak in tongues every day, it's the gift of tongues is not our heavenly language that we speak every day. Okay? It's not the same. It's a gift of tongues. Um, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 12, 1 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Uh, that's in the King James. In the living, it says, Now about spiritual gifts, special endowments given by the Holy Spirit, I do not want you to be uninformed. All right? So Hosea 4, 6 says that my people perish or are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And it's interesting, the word perish and are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of knowing, okay? Um, uh, the words perish and destroyed means to come to ruin, spoil, extinguish, to be rendered useless, to fade, to cease, to wither, to evaporate. That means spiritually. I remember uh, a couple years ago, the church I minister in, in Delaware, and I still do, um, one of the worship people in the worship team um, had always uh, had a lot of joy and always flowed in the gifts and had a strong anointing on her all the time. And I remember one time going there to minister uh, from afar, I, I just looked at her and there was a like cloud, like a dull gray cloud over her countenance, over her whole being, actually. And I remember thinking, what ever happened to her? She used to be so on fire, and the light and the joy of the Lord used to be so strong. Like, what's going on there? So um, anyway, she led worship and everything, and it wasn't the same. The anointing was different. Um, you could tell something was wrong. And later on after the service, um, we were talking, her and I were talking, and I said to her, are you okay? What's, you know, are you going through something or something? And she said, why do you ask? And I said, it looks like your fire went out. And I wasn't saying that to rebuke her. I wasn't saying that to correct her or to hurt her or to be critical at all, but out of concern because she was very fiery and very anointed. And um, she shared something with me that I was kind of surprised uh, I'm not going to share it because it's kind of heavy. And um, so anyway, I prayed with her. And so, you know, we go through things. And we have to, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. That word heart translates spirit. We have to guard our spirits all the time. Because we're going to have warfare. While you're in the world, you're going to have tribulation. And we have to guard our spirits so that we don't, uh, allow the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy the life of the Spirit, the anointing he's given us, the gifts he's imparted, of the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And that's what happened to her. And so um, also when we uh, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, when you don't have understanding, I'm going to also dovetail it with this, when you don't have understanding and you don't have teaching and you're not sitting under any kind of encouragement or instruction concerning spiritual gifts, in those areas, you will spoil, you will extinguish, you will, be, uh, you will fade, you will seize, you will wither, and you will evaporate in the anointing spiritually concerning being used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we have to constantly stay sharpened and hear things that will um, spark us and encourage us and light us uh, to stay hungry for the things of the Spirit. Okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Therefore, let anyone who thinks he is strong and, and, and he who feels sure that he has a steadfast mind and is standing, take heed lest he fall. So, again, <laughs> that very anointed worship leader, I was taken back at how she had lost ground. And, again, I'm not judging or condemning. I'm just saying it can happen, but we have to guard. You know, we have to guard. She did let her guard down, and we have to guard, you know, because the, the enemy goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may 
devour, and we have to guard against him coming and stealing from us. Okay, so there's... Um, so that there'll be no lack of knowledge or understanding about the nine gifts of the Spirit, our heavenly language, or the gift of tongues, I want to quickly go over some things to lay a foundation before I go into the gift of tongues, okay? Because without going into these foundations, it's really, you know, useless to share on the gift of tongues if you don't have this foundation, okay? So I remember when we were in Bible school, I'm John, you'll remember this too, we had to learn... We had to know. We were asked the question, do you know all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit? And do you know all three categories that they fall in? And we had to write down um, all the nine gifts and all the three categories that they fell under. So my question to you tonight is, you don't have to raise your hand or nothing, do you know all of the nine gifts of the Spirit? And do you know all the categories that they fall under? Okay. Because the nine gifts split up into threes, and there's three categories that all the gifts fall under. And so I'm asking you because if you do not know all nine gifts of the Spirit and what, categ what categories they fall under, uh, most likely you will not be flowing in them, okay? Because you need to know all that, all right? Uh, again, Hosea 4, 6, my people are perish or destroyed for lack of knowledge or a lack of knowing, all right? All right, so I'm going to cover them real quick. Um, there are nine gifts of the Spirit, and there are three categories. The first categories are the power gifts. And the power gifts do something. All right? And those power gifts that do something are the working of miracles, gift of faith, and gifts of healing. This is really teachy, teachy stuff, okay? The second category of gifts are the revelatory gifts. These reveal something. And those gifts are words of knowledge, okay, which reveals something past or present, words of wisdom, which reveals something future, and the gift of discerning of spirits, which enables you to see into the spirit realm, demons, angels, Jesus, and whatever else in the spirit realm, okay? Then the third category is uh, the vocal gifts, which say something. And those gifts are the gift of prophecy, Tongues and interpretation of tongues because they say something. Tongues and interpretation of tongues are equal to prophecy. Okay, for those of you that don't know that. And um, they're usually known as one gift, even though they are two. Okay, because when you pray in tongues, the Bible says, pray that you may interpret. So if you come forth with the gift of tongues, um, it's good to prepare your faith and your spirit to bring forth the interpretation. But sometimes, okay, this is what happens to me lots of times. Lots of times I'll, I'll go forward in a public setting where I'll bring forth the gift of tongues and I'll just know that I don't have the interpretation. Someone else will. So God will give you that anointing, that knowing, sometimes in that gift. But most often when you pray, when you come forth with the gift of tongues, the gift of tongues, not your everyday tongue language, okay? Um, he will have you interpret as well, all right? So always be prepared for that either way. But, but get honed and get um, educated and get, um, how can I say it? Get trained in the spirit to know the difference. You have to know the difference, okay? All right, let's see. Um, all right, I forgot where I left off here. All right. All right, whenever you pray in your heavenly language, um, all right, whenever we pray in our heavenly language um, or prayer, it is always initiated by us. All right, when we pray in our tongues, our daily tongues, our heavenly language, it's initiated by us, but the gift of tongues is initiated by the Holy Spirit. That's the difference, Okay. It's like the gift of prophecy. Um, you know, sometimes you come to service and you don't know God's going to use you to prophesy. So you have to be ready for that, you know. Sometimes in the morning while I'm getting ready, the Lord will just, that anointing will be in me and I'll know that I'm carrying something. You'll feel like you're pregnant with something, you know, in the spirit. And then when you're in the service, God will kind of surface it, 
You know, in fact, prophecy means to bubble forth, to bubble up. You'll actually feel it bubbling up, bubbling forth inside of you. And so, and you don't have all the words. You don't know what God's going to say. You know, prophecy evolves. You know, you'll get one or two thoughts or one or two pictures or uh, one or two words. And then as you give forth those words, you come forth in faith, um, and he'll give you the rest because prophecy does evolve, okay? And again, I've said this before. I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't prophesy is because they don't have the whole picture, you know, and you're not going to have the whole picture, all right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Okay. All right. So the gift of tongues is not like, um, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the gift of tongues is initiated by the Holy Spirit, and our heavenly language is initiated by us. So that tongue is initiated by us. Now, you can pray in tongues and ask for the interpretation, but that's still not the gift of tongues. Okay? You can pray in tongues at home and ask for the interpretation, but that's still not the gift of tongues. That's just f your faith and the unction flowing. 1 John 2.20 says, I've been giving you an unction for the Holy One that causes you to know all things. That unction, while you're praying in tongues and you're praying for the interpretation, again, it's not the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation. It's just you praying in tongues and getting the interpretation. Again, that's just uh, 1 John 2.20. That's your knower is causing you to know what you just prayed in tongues, and you will give the interpretation. Right? So you need to know the difference in that. People just throw it into one ball and think, you know, oh, yeah, it's the same, you know, like the gift of tongues and interpretation. No, it's not. You know, and you need to know that when it's operating. You need to know the difference. There's a different anointing, okay? When we pray in our everyday heavenly language, it does five things, all right? Now, again, I'm not talking about the gift of tongues. I'm just talking about our everyday heavenly language, all right, tongues. When we pray in tongues, as we're supposed to every day, it does five things. The first thing it does is we worship God with our tongues. Now, sometimes you don't, you don't know what your tongues are doing, so don't try and figure it out. Oh, am I worshiping God now, or what am I doing? You know, just pray in tongues. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit decipher that. Okay, so the first thing you're doing when you pray in tongues is you're worshiping God. Singing can accompany uh, this leading, okay? Often you can sing in the Spirit. Um, sing in tongues. First John 2.20 God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That means you're praying in the spirit with your heavenly language, with your spiritual tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with my understanding. And I will sing in the spirit, and I will sing with my understanding also. Again, that's praying in tongues. Not the gift, just tongues. Okay. Psalm 96, 1 says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Okay, again, the unction, 1 John 2.20, will cause you to sing new songs, you know, especially if you have a psalmist anointing. You know, years ago, before I preached, uh, I used to go to churches and sing, you know, and I used to have accompaniment tapes, remember those? <laughs> and uh, cassettes. <laughs> and I used to have like a, this, this uh, little suitcase of cassettes. And I would go to different churches because I was asked to go, okay, I didn't invite myself. And I would sing, sing, you know, that's what I used to do. And God used that as a platform for when I was called into the ministry to preach, to open these doors to have me go in. So, you know, our steps are ordered of the Lord, you know. So um, lots of times when I was in that season and those years of singing, um, I, I'm not really in that season anymore. <laughs> you know, um, you have to stay in those seasons. You have to recognize that when he's let go of something, you got to let it go too, you know. And... Um, so anyway, I used to sing a lot in the spirit, different songs, different songs of the, in the spirit, you know. And on occasion, it still happens, but not like it was, not like it used to be. So it's good to initiate even praying in tongues and singing in tongues, rather, all right, because the Holy Spirit will uh, just take you off onto something that'll be fun and different and anointed. All right, the second thing of the five that... Uh, occurs when we pray in tongues uh, is that we talk directly to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but speaks to God. 
So when you're praying in tongues, just know that you're right before the face of the Father. You're addressing him personally, okay? The third thing that happens or occurs when we pray in tongues is that we speak mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. He who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries. So when we pray out those mysteries, they take shape and form in the natural. You're praying out mysteries because there's things you don't know of that you know not of. And so when you go into the spirit realm, you start praying and hitting that thing in the, in praying in the spirit, um, things are taking form and shape in the spirit realm and manifesting in the natural for you on your behalf. You're praying out mysteries that, you know, mystery is something you don't understand, something you don't know. But you're praying out the mysteries that you don't understand. You don't know that God knows. And again, you're going to the spirit realm. And you're pulling it down into the natural. They're taking shape and form, okay, in the natural realm as you go into the spirit and pray in tongues. But if you don't do that, you know, the going's going to get tough a lot of times. Because, you know, he's given us these aids, these tools to help hone his will on the earth. Okay, the fourth thing um, and benefit of uh, speaking in tongues is uh, speaking in tongues helps our weaknesses. Now, this is really interesting, this scripture. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities and weaknesses. And that word infirmities translates both physical and mental weaknesses. Wow. Isn't that interesting? I mean, have you ever heard that before? I haven't heard that taught in church. So when you get physical um, and mental um, weakness and attacked, pray in the Spirit. Because it says in Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit helps our physical and mental weaknesses, infirmities. That's what that means, that word. And so as we pray in the spirit, you know, he's there to lift us up. He's there to carry us. He's there to encourage us to pour in the oil and the wine, you know. And so that's why we need to pray in tongues when you're in warfare, when you're under attack. You know, don't run to the phone, run to the throne. You've heard that? And pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, you know. I remember years ago, you know, I had friends that used to, you know, really pray for me a lot. And, you know, who knows, maybe they still do. But, you know, after a while, I was relying on them, you know. I was looking for that, you know. And then all of a sudden, God pulled that out from under me. You know, he didn't want me asking them to pray for me anymore. He didn't want me to find out if they were praying for me more, anymore. Hey, if, they were pray, if they're still praying for me, that's fine. But, you know, he'll wean you off of things that will bring you strength in the natural. Because he's a jealous God and he wants us to be totally reliant on him in the spirit. How are you going to be strong in the spirit if you're constantly relying on natural things? And natural people. The word says, rely, you know, lean not to the arms of flesh. He is a jealous God, you know. So, you know, if you expect people to fluff your spiritual pillows or to uh, exhort you all the time, you know, there's exhorters in the body of Christ, you know, uh, that praise God if they come to you and they exhort you and they encourage you and lift you up, you know, that's great, but don't go looking for them to do that, okay? Because that's not right, all right? And God will cut that off real quick. All right, because he doesn't want us relying on anything in this natural realm other than him, the spirit. Okay. And the fifth thing that um, is a benefit uh, when we pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, not the gift of tongues, just everyday tongues. Okay. Is that we pray the perfect will of God. Romans 8, 27. When you do not know what you ought to pray. The Spirit himself intercedes for us when we pray in tongues. With groanings, which our natural words cannot utter, because he knows the mind of the Spirit and prays the perfect will of God. Whoa. So you get your machine gun out and start praying in the Holy Ghost. Because it will pray the perfect and acceptable will of God when you know not what to pray. The Spirit knows what to pray. 
He knows the mind of the Spirit, and he prays the perfect will of God. Okay? So look at the tools we've been given. Wow. We don't hear a lot of this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. We need to hear more of this stuff. Amen? The gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues flow as one gift, even though they're two separate, okay, gifts. They flow as one gift. And, the, and I said to you before, they are equal to prophecy. There is a higher realm of faith that needs to be developed in the believer that desires to flow in the gift of tongues along with the gift of interpreting of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, okay? There is a higher realm of faith that you're going to have to flow in if you're, going to, if you're going to have the Holy Spirit move through you to speak in the gift of tongues and then flow in the interpretation of it, okay? There's going to be a higher realm of faith in that. And you work on that at home. You don't do that in church, you know? You know, okay, God, okay, you know, I, wonder, I want the interpretation. Well, God will move on you with the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation. He'll move on you. You don't have to, you know, Ask him or, you know, wait for, you know, you can wait, yes, but you can, you, you can get your faith out there, but uh, he moves on you to flow in that, all right? And so you should be already built up and ready to be out of the pen, boom, like that horse that's ready for the race and that gate opens, bang, he's out. You know, we should be the same in the spirit realm, you know? I think that's why a lot of gifts don't flow, you know, in some churches and in services, rather. Um, because I don't think we're, we're putting ourselves in a position where we can be used, where God can just drop on us, boop, and, and flow through us, you know? Because I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'm not up to par. Sometimes I'm not up to par, you know? And, and I'll know sometimes God wants to use me, but I'm not up to par. And I have to repent. We have to repent for that, you know? And so he wants us to be up to par. He wants us to be uh, ready. He wants us to be instant in season and out of season, the word says. Whether it's, in, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, to be instant in season and out of season, you know? And so um, it's what you do all week that gets you ready for God to move on you in a service. It's what you're doing all week. What are you doing all week? What are you giving your mind over to? What are you giving your body over to? What are you doing? <laughs> you know? And so it all, it, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it all, it all tallies up and affects our spirit, you know? And so that's why we have to be prepared and sow to the spirit realm and, um, you know, be a good steward of the things of the spirit by availing ourselves and by living a life that's conducive to being used. That's holy. That's pleasing to the Lord. You know, I mean, lately I've been sensing really strong, like God's, you know, you know, you hear lots of times that we need to press into God. Of course, we always do. But, you know, when God starts pressing into you, that's something else. And I've been feeling God pressing into me and pressing into me. And, and it's like, and, and, you know, you just have to yield over to that. And you have to not just recognize it and yield over to it, but you got to figure out. No, you can't figure it out because that's reasoning. You have to yield over to what he's trying to do. Because you may not have the full understanding, but you just have to say, I'm availing myself. Here I am. I surrender. I surrender. Now give me understanding. Open the eyes of my understanding. Give me the understanding that I need. Cause my thoughts to be in agreement to your will. In Jesus' name, and he will. He will do that, you know. You know, I've learned you can't get comfortable with nothing and nobody. Not even in relationships. You can't get too comfortable. Mm -mm -mm. Because when he wants to raise his pinky in that relationship and do something different, you got to flow with that. You got to flow with that. You know, one of the things about God that's <laughs> outstanding, you cannot put him in a box. But you see what's so cool about God? He doesn't want you to be put in a box either. By the devil, by your own thinking, or by people. Okay? He doesn't want you to be put in a box either. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's liberty. And joy unspeakable. 
and full of glory. Full of glory. Mm. We have to stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Not our own. His might. Not our own. Mm. That's what the life is all about in the spirit, right? Okay, let's see. It is vital to stay in faith when we ask God to flow. Okay, I already said that. All right. Um, oh, yeah, actually, I'm going to read it again because the scripture after it's going to be um, uh, conducive to it. Uh, so it is vital to stay in faith and to ask God to flow in the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. It's vital to stay, it's vital to stay in faith when we ask him to flow in those kind of gifts and, of course, prophecy as well. But Gen, uh, Genesis 40, verse 8 says, concerning the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, um, do not, Genesis 40, verse 8, do not interpretations belong to God? Amen. So it's not our soul that interprets what we speak in tongues. It's not our souls. It's God interpreting through us. Okay? So Genesis 41, verse 8, that was. I mean, yeah, Genesis 40, I'm sorry, verse 8. Do not interpretations belong to God? The interpretation of spiritual things is also an anointing to be sought after. You can walk in an anointing of interpretations. And I'll get into that a little more. Genesis 41, verse 8. For there was none that could interpret Pharaoh's dream. Again, there's an anointing of interpretation there. Hmm. I have a couple friends that, and one in New York, that uh, uh, interprets dreams. Now, I don't have that anointing. Every once in a while, I'll have a dream, or someone will share a dream with me, and boom, I'll just know by the Spirit. You know, I'll just know. I'll have the interpretation. But I don't flow in that all the time. I don't have that anointing. But on occasion, sovereignly, I'll have understanding what that dream was, what the Spirit of God was saying in that dream, and I'll have the interpretation. Sometimes just the handwriting on the wall is just so, it's just so simple what God is saying in that dream, you know, that there, there's no heavy revy there, you know. But, um, you know, we can pray for that anointing. We can covet earnestly spiritual gifts. Um, so if you're not covet, coveting earnestly, uh, those kind of gifts and interpretations of things, uh, you'll not flow in them. Because the word says, uh, those that hunger and thirst shall be made full. Well, what are you full of? What have you been hungering for? Or are you empty? Because you've not been hungry. You know? I mean, we have to take these evaluations. You know? And... Um, you know, we're supposed to be working, walking circumspectly, you know. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 30, do all have gifts of healings? Doesn't answer, but no. Do all speak in tongues? The gift of tongues. Do all interpret? The gift of interpretation. Well, covet earnestly. Desire and strive for the greater gifts from God. It's saying, yeah, a lot of people don't flow. In, like, he goes to different countries, he flows in miracles. Well, you know, how many of us flow in miracles? Okay? Well, that happens to be a gift that God's given him that goes with his fivefold call, though. He's an evangelist, okay? That's one of the gifts that go with the evangelist. But, you know, if we're not flowing in them, it's because we're not, now, that's, that's a sovereign impartation there because of the call. But we need to stir ourselves up and to covet earnestly that gift so that we can flow in it too. If we do not, because we're not an evangelist, okay, if we do not covet earnestly miracles, working in miracles, gifts of faith, uh, you know, um, we're, we won't flow in them. We won't, you know. I mean, for years the Lord showed me there were specific things he wanted me to flow in and for years, I didn't because I didn't covet them. I didn't hunger for them. And I never asked him. When I started hungering and training and learning about them and asking, just a little bit, I started flowing in them. Just on a very small scale, I started flowing, on them, flowing in them, rather. And so the same is with us. We have to start somewhere, you know. So that's why it says, do all... Um, 
Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all have? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. But covet earnestly and desire and strive to, and you will. That's pretty much is what that's saying, because these are gifts from God. Amen. First Corinthians fourteen thirteen. Therefore, the person who speaks in an unknown tongue should also pray that he may interpret, so that he can also be gifted to translate or explain what he just said. Wow! I'm going to read that again. First Corinthians fourteen thirteen. Therefore, the person who speaks in an unknown tongue. Now, it's talking about the gift of tongues. Not our everyday prayer, heavenly language, okay? Uh, he who speaks in an unknown tongue should also pray that he may interpret so that he can also be gifted to translate or explain what he just spoke. Okay? Again, this is referring to the gift of uh, tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. We place ourselves and our lives into the spirit realm by sowing to the spirit. Sowing to the Spirit causes us to be more sensitive to the Spirit's promptings when he wants to step out and use us, especially when the gifts desire to surface and need to flow. 2 Timothy 4.2, be instant in season and out of season. I said this before, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. We sow to the Spirit by praying in tongues a lot. I'm not talking about the gift of tongues now. I'm talking about our, heavenly, our everyday heavenly language. Okay, so to the spirit a lot. It keeps us agile in the spirit. You know what agile is, right? It's like a soft, those soft leaves, they just flow with the wind in the fall. You know, they're not the hard ones yet. Okay, they're the soft ones that just came off the tree. They still have color. They're very subtle, okay? And they flow with the wind. They're very agile. That's exactly how we were supposed to be in the spirit, agile. You know, you come in and, and, and you, in fact, I'm going to share something really funny with you. <laughs> this is funny. Um, years ago, it was my brother's birthday, and he wanted to go to, um, you know those drama or mystery dinners? Okay? And they have themes and stuff like that. Okay. Well, he wanted to go to this mystery dinner, and a whole bunch of us went because it was his birthday. And uh, the Holy Spirit that whole day said to me, uh, I want you to uh, be real loose. I want you to be real loose and start just shaking your hands and just start, just be real loose. Be real loose and just, you know, shake yourself and just be real loose today, okay? So I was shaking my hands and I was doing my neck and I was shaking around and I just felt like the Lord, the Lord just kept saying, hang loose today. Just hang. be real loose and agile today. Be real loose and agile. So I just kept going like this and, you know, being limber and moving myself around, okay? So that night we went to the, to mystery dinner, whatever you call them, and uh, we were all given um, our our part. You know how you're given your name and what your part is. Have you ever been? Uh, that was the first one I was ever to. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, uh, I was the star of the whole show's <laughs> girlfriend. Okay, and do you remember the name? It was hysterical. Valium. Yeah, my name was Valium. Okay. <laughs> And the star, who was the, the murderer of the mystery, okay, um, he loved to dance. And so me, being his girlfriend, Valium, um, he pulled me up on the dance floor while the music was playing. And he was a pretty good dancer, man. And he had me from one side of the floor to the other. And, and I kept up with him. We were flowing like, you know, water and ice, man. We were just flowing, you know. And... Uh, and, and the Lord, and the, then I realized why the Lord said, "Stay agile, stay real loose, stay real flexible," because my family was like, "I cannot believe how good you were up there." It was like you two were Fred Astaire and uh, Ginger Rogers. You guys were so good. And you know, God has a sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. And I have to say, I enjoyed myself. You know, the Lord prepared me. To be agile, and he said, stay loose, stay loose, stay agile, stay loose, you know, stay free, you know. <laughs> it was hysterical, and my family was cracking up, and everybody thought, other than my family, that I was part of the team that was part of the play, because I was so good, you know, and uh, I wasn't. I was one of the people that walked in the door and was given, you know, my role, you know, it was hysterical. So isn't that funny? 
how God will use something like that. But it's an example in the spirit realm how we are to be agile all the time. Now, that was something in the natural. But, you know, in the spirit realm, you know, what if tonight he wanted one of you to bring forth tongues and interpretation of tongues? You know, were you agile enough in preparation in your spirit to flow in that tonight? You know, were you agile and ready and prepared and, and freed up enough to flow in that? If, he, if the wind of God blew on you, would you have been agile enough to flow in that tonight, you know? And so that's how he wants us to be. We have to hang loose and be agile and free and so that when he moves on us, he will lead us and we'll just flow, man. We'll just flow and look like, man, she is like really a professional, you know. And it's like, yeah, well, yeah, that was that's the Holy Ghost behind all that, you know, yeah. Well, the glory to him because you don't know. You know, hysterical. It was hysterical. But anyway, uh, it, it's a parallel in the spirit realm, what we ought to do, right? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, we also sow to our spirit, uh, sow to the spirit realm and our spirits by keeping a spiritual appetite uh, and staying hungry. Hunger, listen to this, hunger throws open the doors to the spirit realm and to flowing in the gifts. If you're spiritually anemic or bulimic, you won't flow in the gifts. You won't flow in the gifts. You have have to stay hungry. Covet earnestly. You just can't covet. You got to covet earnestly. Whoa. That means you got, honey, you got to mean it, you know? Otherwise, these two realms um, of doors being open to us in the spirit and being sensitive and flowing in the spirit will be dormant to us and closed if you don't stay hungry, okay? Um, Gifts will lay dormant and will be inactive um, if we don't desire them and get knowledge about them. Um, we don't make ourselves flow in the gifts, but we can activate them by desire and by asking God to be used. James 4, 2, you receive not because you ask not. You know, you can, you know, covet earnestly spiritual gifts, but you have to ask God to be used too. But then you have to be prepared to be used, you know? You have to be prepared to be used. There's a lot in that, and, you know, I can go into some things, but, you know, you have to to watch your diet. You have to watch your mouth. You have to watch your spirit. You have to watch your attitude. You have to pray, you know. You have to get in the word. You have to speak the word. You can't have any ought. You can't have offense. You can't allow rejection. You can't allow people to hurt you, use you, abuse you, even though they may do all that. You can't be affected by any of that. Duh. It's no longer us that lives, but Christ that lives in us. In the life we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God. None of that affects you. It's not supposed to. You know? We, how do we, how do we uh, have those things not affect us? By staying in the Spirit. How do you stay in the Spirit? By sowing to the Spirit. How do you sow to the Spirit? By spray, praying in tongues and speaking the Word. You know, I remember before I was saved, you know, I'll, I'll share some things with you because, you know, that's not me anymore, you know. But before I was saved, um, you know, I had weird fears. I used to be afraid to talk on the phone. That's stupid. I used to, I used to be afraid to talk on the phone. Duh. And my friends would call, and, and you know, my mother would say, when I was a teenager at home, my mother would say, it's so-and-so, and I was, what do they want? <laughs> you know? What do they want? I wasn't saved. I wasn't saved, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was a tough chick. But something like that, so bizarre, weird. I was really tough, but when it came to the phone, it was weird. Didn't understand it. But, you know, the devil will put phobias on you and make you look like a real jerk, you know, and uh, make you an idiot, and you're not an idiot, you know. So that was one of the weird things that I used to, you know. Now, I'm fine now. I don't, actually, I don't like talking on the phone. I'm not afraid to talk on the phone, but I don't like talking on the phone. That's why when they came out with cell phones and texting, thank you, Jesus. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I am not a phone person, you know. <laughs> but when those text messages came out, oh, yeah, okay. God's good. God's good. You are so cool, God, you know. So anyway, um, you know, whatever fears or whatever you may have had, you know, um, when they rear their ugly head, uh, you're not victim to them. 
You're not victim to them, you know. Because the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new in Christ Jesus, you know. And you're walking in that, you know. So you've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind in that truth, okay. Um, I think that there's a great need for prophetic prayer in prayer meetings. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Um, I think that there needs to be a whole lot more praying in tongues uh, in prayer meetings. Why? Because I just read it. When you know not what to pray, you pray in the Holy Ghost. Because he knows the mind of the Spirit, and he prays the perfect will of God. And then when you pray in tongues, doesn't necessarily mean the gift of interpretation. He'll give you the interpretation. He'll give the interpretation. Again, that's 1 John 2, 20 operating. The unctions causing you to know what you just prayed. And what's so wonderful about praying in tongues at prayer meetings, okay, not only are you praying the mind of the Spirit, and the perfect will of God, because he knows the mind of the Spirit, okay? Um, but when he starts giving you the interpretation, or you're just praying in tongues, um, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're like a honing tool on someone else's sword. And then they start sparking across the, the room, because you're praying in tongues, and it's stirring them up. Yeah. How many times has Mark, or Sue, or John, or, or, or Judy, or someone will start praying, or even Tina, you're, you're, she's, she's, a, she's Flint. You are definitely like Flint, because sparks fly when you, when you pray and stuff like that, or prophesy even. You know, and it's like, uh, you know, they're praying, and you, I mean, you are like, you are ready to come out of that pen. You're like a bull in a china shop, man. You are ready to come out, because cause they're sparking in you. You know, you're, you're knowing what they're praying. You know what they're praying. You know what needs to be prayed next. And so then you start praying in English, the interpretation, and then it starts sparking in someone else what they ought to pray. And it all started by praying in tongues. And, it's, and again, when you go back to the dilemma, you don't know what to pray. Everybody, so let's start praying in tongues again. Because the tongues knows the mind of the Spirit, and it prays the perfect will of God. And I think lots of times, you know, we try to keep praying in English and keep praying in English, and there's no power. There's no anointing. There's no oil. And it's us. We're doing it because we're supposed to be doing it. And it's like, well, wait a minute now. It's not the mind of the Spirit, and it's not the perfect will of God. And it, we're learning. We're all learning, you know, and we're all growing. But I think that's a major, major, um, I think, breakthrough in Revelation that the church is going to begin to enter into more and more and more, praying in tongues, Okay. And then getting the interpretation and everybody just sparking off each other. Boom, 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 boom. That's how it's going to start, you know? Um, okay. So let's see. Um, we must allow praying in tongues to get, uh, to become, uh, I'm sorry. We must never allow praying in tongues to become mundane or old to us in any way. If we do, we'll end up living in the valley of dry bones spiritually. Yeah. Um, Praying in tongues is the oxygen to your spirit, man. It will cause demons to leave you alone. Praying in tongues hones your knower on the inside of you so that you'll understand what you're praying, which is also the interpretation of tongues. It's not just in a public setting or service, okay? Um, when we pray in tongues, okay, um, it puts a hedge about us, and it causes us to clothe ourselves in a spiritual garb. It will clothe us in spiritual garb that otherwise, before you were praying in tongues, you were not covered in. You were not clothed in. You were not walking in, okay? So, you know, my question to you is, and don't raise your hand or anything like that, you don't have to answer, um, Sadly, before I ask you the question, sadly, a lot of us only pray maybe 10 minutes a week, maybe. Some of us only pray maybe 30 minutes a month. Think about it. Um, and the thing is, the more we excel in praying in tongues, it'll launch us into more of the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, so that he'll begin to use us more in the gift of tongues with the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Because if you don't hollow your spirit out and, and, and allow God to fill you, giving God place, you know, the Bible says don't give the devil place, but we need to give God place. You do that by praying in tongues. 
your heavenly language. You hone out and you, and you make a place, a, 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 a bed place for God to dwell and to grow. And you expand, you know, the Bible says, expand your um, tent pegs and let out your borders. Well, how do you do that? By praying in tongues. It didn't say God was going to do that. It says, you expand your borders. You let out your ten pegs. How do you do that? By praying in the spirit so that God can use you more in the spirit, by the spirit, and through his gifts. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to give you a little task to do at home uh, this week, next week, and as often as you remember, and that is... um, uh, a little exercise. I want you to take something or someone, and I want you to pray in English. Um, sh- you know, just brief at home when you're home, not not here tonight. When you're home, just briefly. Lord had me doing this all this week. Uh, just to briefly, you know, pray for that individual or yourself or a situation that you're going through right now. Uh, briefly in English, and then. Uh, th- think of all the scriptures. Just don't pray in English. Think of all the scriptures that you can think of that will apply to the answer to that need, to that individual, to that situation, to that scenario, okay? And um, when you're done r- r- uh, presenting it to the Lord, binding what you need to do, breaking off what you need to do, and then praying the word, okay? He says, put me in remembrance of my word, okay? Then go into the spirit realm and start praying in tongues, because then you're going to hit what you're not hitting in, the, in English, in your own understanding, okay? Then pray in tongues. Pray till you have a release. Then wait on God to give you the interpretation of what you just spoke. Now, if you don't get it, fine. Don't get upset or try and make yourself to interpret, okay? But um, when you get in that flow, you'll see how easy it is. Because, see, now you're yielding over with the awareness, with the understanding, what you're doing. And so now God can work with you in that, okay? Because now you're aware of what you're doing. He's not just working on his side knowing what he's doing, but now you're in agreement and you're both in one accord, all right? And so um, do that. And you will be surprised how often you're going to flow in that and in the understanding. And then, boom, that will kick off uh, the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues because you're in preparation by just praying in the Spirit and then... First John 2.20, now you're getting the unction, okay, and getting the understanding of what you just prayed. And again, you are hollowing yourself out and preparing your spirit to launch into the gift of tongues with the interpretation of tongues, okay, by doing that homework at home. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to close in prayer. Father... Thank you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that this was like uh, teaching tonight, like uh, class tonight, uh, uh, a leadership class tonight. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to share. Uh, I thank you, Lord, that um, uh, your word's not going to return void without accomplishing that which you're sending it to do tonight in and through uh, those that are present tonight. I I stir up and fan to flame within them the desire to pray in tongues more and to cover earnestly your gifts, but especially that they may prophesy and uh, that they will continue to pursue love, which is the greatest gift of all in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that as we continue to sow to the Spirit, uh, you will have the liberty to flow through us at will in Jesus' name, and really, that's what it's all about. We give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor for your awesome, awesome word and your awesome, awesome presence and anointing. We love you, Lord. Use us to your glory in these last days, in Jesus' name, and we just thank you for a wonderful, wonderful night in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Should I give it to you or should I give it to Mark? The Mets, number 31. I'll give it to 31. Here you go, 31. Somebody's got to be a Mets fan. Yes. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. My wheels up here are spinning. My wheels in here are spinning. That was a lot to chew on, but it was all delicious. I feel like I just had a really good meal. Amen. Wasn't that good? Did that make anybody else like kind of challenge you in your spirit? And I like Teacher Angel. That was that was special. That was really, really good.
so I, I want to just throw something. We're, we're so closing. I'm not, like, taking this into it. But during worship, God was kind of speaking to my spirit, and I didn't know to release it. And Because it was interesting what the Lord said to me. Sometimes we get really profound words in the spirit, you know. And like you said, we get it in part. And, you know, and, and it really gets activated when you release it. You know, when you come up and you, and you believe what God is putting in you, you get that part. You come up in faith and you release it. And then it's like, poof. It, it gets expounded. The next thing you know, and you're prophesying things. This isn't one of those words. So, <laughs> but God, but I heard a really like, <laughs> I heard, a, it's not, <laughs> this is not profound. This is simple. I heard a ringing in the spirit. I heard just a, a really faint, like a phone ringing. And, uh, and God was saying, I, I really wish my people would hear when I'm trying to call them. And I really, really feel that God is, is, is calling us. He, he's, he's trying to get our attention. Like when you're, you know, we have the, we're in the generation where we have a phone in our pocket all the time. And when it rings, we're always available, right? Most of us that want to talk on the phone. But, you know, when it rings, you're like, oh, 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 you know, and hello. But God is calling us. And I heard in my spirit, God said, I have your number. Okay, now the generation I came in, if someone said that to you, yo, I got your number, that was not a good thing. That means I know you, I know where you live, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself because I got your number. I see you, I read you. But what God is saying is, I got your number, he sees you, he knows where you live, he knows what's going on. He's calling you to try to take you higher by actually taking you deeper. Will you pick up? And I really feel like tonight was a challenge and a call from God and saying, hear me, I'm speaking to you. Will you answer and respond? So take, take what was spoken tonight. Take what was released by someone who I know walks in this. Pick it up. Respond to this. And go deeper. And I like that fact of hollowing yourself out. Because people make a room for a lot of stuff in their lives that has no business as believers, but they're making room for it constantly, day after day after day. But will you make room for God in this hour? Because this is not an hour to play games. This is not an hour to backslide. This is not an hour where we need to be away from God in any sort of the word. And I'm telling you, I thank God for being able to pray in tongues because sometimes I ain't got it. We build ourselves up in our most holy faith by praying in tongues. Sometimes we ain't got the faith, we ain't got the prayer, but you know what you got? You got a tongue, you got the Holy Ghost that'll pray through you, speak through you, build your faith. Sometimes the devil just wants to keep us from that point of this. Shataramando, because the minute you let that go, the engine of the spirit starts cranking on the inside of you. Breakthrough comes, activation comes. Then you're speaking in English. Now you're declaring. Now you're prophesying. Why? Because you got to the point of the Rande Shandai. <laughs> Get in your closet. Challenge yourself this week. Pray in tongues when nobody is watching. Speak the mysteries. Pray to God. Watch what happens. And eagerly desire the greater gifts. You want to walk in miracles? My God, when I got saved, I was like, God. Huh. If you would do it through me. You know, desire it. Hallelujah. God's so good. So good. So I'm challenged. I'm challenged. And that was wonderful. So, Father, we praise you. We give you such glory. You are beyond comprehension. My favorite part of tonight is just realizing that you have given it all unto us. Because we got nothing apart from you. But in you, we have all things. And in you, all things are possible. So, Father, I thank you that you did not leave us as orphans. You have sent us the Holy Spirit, God. We are not alone in this walk. We are not alone in this fight. We are not alone. And you have sent the promise. You have clothed us with power. You have fully equipped us to do what you have called us to do in the face of our enemies and in the face of glory. So, Father, we give you such praise.
And I thank you, God, that you are taking us higher by taking us lower. And as we go lower, you are going deep within us and raising us to a new standard and level of prayer and praise and understanding and knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not perish by the lack of knowledge. We will not fall to the wayside. And we will not shrink back in this hour. We are raising up higher. We are going deeper. And we will kick the devil's butt in this hour. In Jesus' mighty name. Through what you have equipped us to do. He can try and try. But he will lose and lose against this bunch of believers. In Jesus' mighty name. We are more than conquerors. And Jesus, we glorify you for it. And Father, we praise you for it. For where we could not, you did. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You got something good back there to close us out? I know you always do. Amen. So let's stand to our feet and let's praise Jesus. If you didn't hug somebody on the way in, you better hug somebody on the way out and tell them how much you love them and how much Jesus loves them. And we'll see you on Sunday morning. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be beyond.